Part two of the training is how to uh, turn on things and stuff like that. Things and stuff like that. Uh, so, first slide I'm showing you is actually how the, oops, what am I doing? How things are connected at the uh, stage, stage pocket. So, uh, don't have my pointer with me. Where's my pointer? So I say there are three stage pockets, uh, stage left, stage center, and stage right. Um, what I'm showing you is, oops, it's the other way, is stage left, SL. And here we plug in the drums and the bass guitar, and then a vocal mic for a um, female vocalist. So uh, basically each of these pockets has, has four connectors for audio. The rest is kind of like Cat5 and other things which you don't see too clearly here. Now, so there's a catch. This guy, all four channels are used up, which is fine. Uh, this eight more someplace else, okay? Uh, be careful when you see a spare. If you see a spare, it doesn't mean that you can pluck a microphone in and it's, uh, it, it can give you a sound. Uh, you have to kind of patch it by the wall and then make sure it goes, to, it goes correctly into your mixer. So in this case, um, you know, this is the stage left connector, I mean stage left floor box. Typically we leave these things unchanged, especially now that worship team has to go on stage every week. So it's kind of static now. So move on to the next slide. Uh, oh, I keep screwing up. This is the center pocket. And there's four connectors, one is empty. So what happens is the two, one on the left and one on the right, are the vocal microphones for the worship team uh, vocalists. This is for the female, and this is for the male. Uh, the center two are for podium microphones, and you see one wire connected. Uh, there was at one time a requirement for two podium microphones, so we assigned two lines for it. Now, these connectors, you can plug in either an XLR or a quarter inch um, into the thing, like the previous one. So the one here, this guy is a quarter inch. Now, be careful. Once we set it up for quarter inch, if you pull this cable and plug something next, if you plug a microphone using this XLR into it, it will not work unless, again, you go to the wall, uh, which is behind the piano, and repatch things. Okay, so got to remember that. And I will move on to the stage right connector or the, plug, the stage right pocket. Um, I have two keyboards and there are two quarter inch cables here. And then one XLR and this is a microphone wire a cable for a male vocalist. And then this is not used, not assigned, sorry, and not connected. So if you need to use it someday, you, you want me to connect up to the uh, HDMI, okay, thanks. So give us a second, we're doing some last minute adjustments. So Thomas is going to switch it to, uh, through the video switch to a better looking screen. Okay, so you probably can see it clearer. Two keyboard cables, quarter inch, and a microphone cable. Okay.
This is the magic, the, the patch panel at the, at the back of the piano. On the, on. So here you have to choose the right type of wire. Now, if you have a quarter inch coming in from the floor pocket, you've got to use a quarter inch patch to go into the little rack in the front. And uh, I'm not going to go into details on how you patch it if you want to learn. Uh, you know, I'll talk to you one on one to show you uh, what to do. It's no big secret, it's just tedious. So this is <laughs> a look at this, the, the rack, the little rack. Let me enlarge it a little bit. Okay. There are actually kind of four pieces of uh, machines in here. The bottom one, and remember this, this is the on-off switch. I put a white tape over it. This is the on-off switch for the whole thing. This, the, the one I'm kind of highlighting, is the digital snake. It takes 16 inputs here. It can give you eight <coughs> outputs locally, but it also sends this orange cable, and that is the AES-50 bus that goes inside and above the ceiling into uh, the mixer. This green thing is an embarrassment in my perspective. It is a direct box. It has, I think, eight or 16 channels. I think eight. So remember, some guitars and keyboards come in with quarter-inch cables. So the quarter-inch cables come into here, <clears throat> and on the other end comes the XLR cable. And the XLR cable go gets plugged in into my digital snake. And this is a limitation, actually, of, <laughs> of this design. You know, it does not take any quarter-inch, you know. So it forces you to convert. Okay, what's this guy? This is a, a hub for the Ultranet. Now, I didn't talk much about the Ultranet. It is another Cat5 cable coming from the Midas mixer. It carries 16 channels, and uh, I can route any of the 16 into this thing. And then it feeds through Cat5, again, go to that patch panel by the wall to one of those floor pockets on the stage. And then uh, let me go back to the one in question. Ah, next slide may be better. It goes back to that stage left connector, and this is that Cat5. And we use that to feed the signals into one of the two personal monitors. And uh, uh, Dixon here, our uh, base expert, uses this. And uh, he can listen to and customize his mix on his personal mixer. 16 channels. We have two of them. OK, so that's how that is. Uh, otherwise, that accounts for pretty much the key pieces of hardware <clears throat> on, on, this, on this rack. And see what I've written here. OK, so, so now it's the power on sequence for, the, for this whole thing. The, the, in order to turn on, when you come in and start, you know, working it for the day. Oh, thank you. Uh, first thing is you're going to turn on your Midas uh, first, I think. So, no, I mean turn on the la Midas last. The reason is you've got to power up these things in the front, the two stage monitors and this digital snake. The reason is once you power up the M32 and then if you go on and power up the thing in the front, you can hear some funny big pops and you don't want to do that. Okay, so 
as I showed you, oh, oh, where's my pointer? Okay, so on-off switch is here. And then on-off switch for the two stage monitors are kind of in the back of the black box that, that is sitting on the stage. Okay, and then there's a wireless receiver we put in the front, and that's mainly to to help alleviate crowding of channels. So we have 16, we have 16 channels capability, and we used up, I think, 12 or 13. So there's some spare. And this receiver that I'm holding in my hands is just a convenience because I can take advantage of a spare channel here. So Here's the on-off switch. When you come in, press this button, and then if, if you see this thing light up, you can put back on this step here. Why do I put it on the step, not put them in um, this uh, rack? Because of radio, radio frequency interference. We learned it the hard way. Uh, there are four transmitters in this thing, and it, they are for the in-ear monitors. Today, uh, our worship team, vocalists, are not using them yet. Well, once they get comfortable, we'll introduce uh, these in-ear monitors to them. But anyway, they're always transmitting, those, all, those four transmitters. And it creates some pretty nasty thing uh, for that receiver. So we have to move it off. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my computer. Quick question. Go ahead. Um, why don't we use a power uh, conditioner to kind of handle the sequencing of turning on and off well, the equipment? This is already a power okay. conditioner. It doesn't help. It's radio, fre radio frequency. Well, I, but like I thought you can set a sequence of turning on and off equipment. Yeah, it, it has nothing to do with it. It has to do with um, probably some kind of intermodulation um, uh, and, uh, Interference on on the on the UHF band. Yeah, but usually you can also set a sequence. So actually, to your point, I have to move the power supply off the thing that supplies this thing, because the I mean, because those transmitters actually I don't know whether they meet FCC class A or not, but they are making the power dirty here. And if I plug my Sennheiser receiver onto this thing, which I should do, and I have tried, then I can still get interference from the power. So I actually have to plug my receiver to a different circuit, AC circuit. So it's all kind of learned by mistake, not by mistake, but you know, once you get burned, you, you find out why. Well, and actually, it's sequencing all this equipment. It's a conditioner already. and sequencer. Yeah. It is. So it's sequencer, I don't, I don't care about sequencing. It's, yeah. it's, these things are only about 20 watts per. But it is the, it's the inter interference through the power line that is bothering me, or bothering that other receiver. OK, so I'm going to move on. Uh, let's see. A little bit of housekeeping here. Okay, so let me see. I'm going to show you how to power on the M32. Um, oh, I need Thomas. Oh, great. The power switch, believe it or not, is in the back. So I have to reach, okay, to the back. And you can feel it. Uh, you can also come, you know, after the show, come, come by and take a look at where it is. So reach over. Uh, first, I'm going to power this thing off, and uh, to show you the nasty thing is, uh, if I don't power off the, the, the rack, meaning the, the stage box first, and power this thing off, um, you may hear some noise, but I'll try it anyway. Um, so to power this thing off, and, and actually I'm, <laughs> okay, this is a, go, going to the last 
almost to the last slide powering down. So next to last slide powering down. And I'm, I'm, power, I'm powering down the M32. So how do I do it? Uh, I hope you can see. There's a button called the setup. I press it. You see a screen. Oh boy! I, let me zoom. Okay, good enough. Thanks. All right. So this is set up. Now, watch out. Number one is make sure the tab stays in global, and. If it's not in global, you, you use this left and right arrow to move it to global. Okay. So once it's in global, you can see these things light up. And one of them is this guy. Shut down. So press this thing, and this black thing actually says go. So you press it, and it goes tell the thing to shut down, and the screen you cannot read it, but I'll read it out. You can safely switch off the console now. And Yeah, okay. Now I'm back. Okay. Um, so now I'm kind of going back to my power up sequence thing. So I've just finished. Oops. Uh, Thomas, I need you. Oh, okay. I just finished the turn on the Midas M32 thing. Now I'm, I'm going to do loading of scene. And uh, we have stored uh, three scenes. It's called worship and um, praise team and choir. So those are the three scenes stored. And I'm going to load. When the first thing, you know, you start Sunday worship is you load the scene called the worship. And how you load the scene? This is the, the show, it's called the show control. So uh, Thomas is going to help me zoom in and uh, do this part. Thank you. Okay, so there's a button. Whenever, whenever you want to view a certain section, they always give you a button called a view. Yeah. So it says view. And you press it. You are now on the screen, maybe just panning, you don't need to zoom out. Okay, now you're, you see some, some things, and make sure you're on the Scenes tab, but usually they are. So this actually says Scenes. Because you can, you can, you can be on someplace else, and then you say, oh, how can I load a scene? So you don't want these, you go back to Scene. And you use this thing, the, the, the knob, to scroll. Just turn it. And you just go, go to the thing called the worship. And then again, this knob actually is labeled go, go on the screen. You press it, and that means load it. So one more step is they ask you, are you, you want it for sure? And you say yes by pushing the right arrow. And I do it now. Right arrow. So now I'm on the worship scene. Now what does it mean? It says I only want to enable certain microphones and mute the rest so that the whole hall doesn't come up ringing when the, when the person talks. So uh, 
Thomas, if you can kind of pan it. Um, the podium microphone is on the second layer, 17 through 32. I press it, and then you see this guy here. You unmute the podium, and you're on, meaning, but not every speaker wants to use podium mic. So this is mainly for the, uh, the host, the Su Wei. And then the piano is on. And this is a microphone pointing towards the choir. It's actually, let me see if this thing's, it's, it's this microphone here. And that's on this channel, uh, channel 31. And we can unmute it when the choir sings the call, call to worship, you know, Shan Jiao. Normally we would like to mute it because it may pick up people talking in the choir and it picks up stray noise and it may end up as echoes or feedbacks. So unmute it when you have to and then mute it when, when it's done. Uh, one thing to pay attention to is I go to layer number one, channel 16. Now this is the micro, this is the channel that takes audio from the AV room, and that's where your um, Jia Xun comes out. So we only unmute it when Jia Xun is being shown, okay? Now I unmuted it. And actually you hear echo. If I turn it on, you hear echo. And that's because I didn't unmute it. Why, why are you hearing it? Because that computer is taking the audio feed and pushing it, pumping it back out to me. Yeah, or from, from the camera or both. But it, it's from the, meet, from the PC. It's from the PC. Okay. So kind of, you learned it by mistake. You get burned a few times. Okay, now, see there's some... Oh, uh, can you pan on this guy? Okay, and can you see the orange, orange LED if I speak loud? That's, that means he's giving me too, too much output. Now, you can mitigate it by lowering the trim, but it's pretty low. The trim is already set pretty low. So you just play it by ear. You, you know, if all else fails, just turn on the compression. Okay, uh, so, so now I'm through the loading of scenes. Oh, we got to change the scenes on the fly. So first service is pretty straightforward. When the, when the choir goes up, we scroll to the choir scene and say go and load it. So you're back in business, and then, you know, whoever the uh, person giving the sermon, he may choose to use the podium mic, or he may choose to use one of the uh, pocket, not pocket, the uh, body pack mics. And uh, Thomas, if I can ask you to pan towards here. Yeah. Can you do panel over here? So I have to go back to the first layer, and that is where any one of these three can be used or can be used by the speaker. Number three is that wireless mic that Reverend Kwan likes to use. So you have to unmute it, and then he starts talking, and then you, you, you adjust his volume. Uh, earlier today, the, the microphone that um, 
Pastor Cho is using is actually on here. And that's the same one I'm, I'm using now. You may notice I sound better than Pastor Cho. That's because I don't, I de, I'm not using that uh, uh, lavalier microphone that's clipped on my shirt. I'm using kind of a head-worn mic that is uh, much closer to, uh, to my mouth. Okay, so that's, you know, when, when you do more of these, you know the subtle differences, and then you, you, you kind of try to optimize and give, get the best results. Okay, so I have to move on. The USB recorder, I'll do it just a quick. Uh, uh, can I switch to the console? Okay, the USB recorder is here. You press view, you see a kind of a cassette recorder here. You plug in a USB drive, and then pretty much you can type, you can hit record, which is here, and this thing will turn and it records. So very simple. And mixed buses, 11 and 12, I pushed this button, oops, here, okay. I pushed this button, remember, bus one through eight is this button and you can, you can see a whole bunch of different settings here. This is how I feed my mix into the USB recorder. Okay, so that's the USB recorder. Oh, you, uh, oh, let me put you back on. Uh, do, 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 which microphone are you on? Uh, give me a sec. Not these. Okay, go ahead. Uh, what's the uh, output format for the USB recording? Is like what file format is it? Uh, yeah, did I? Yeah, it's, it's in WAV format. A oh, WAV format? And it's, it's a huge file. Yeah, so like for a 15 minutes recording, approximately? Maybe 100 oh. megabytes. Oh, okay. Do you have a uh, processing software? You can get free one. You can install. Uh, I use Audacity. You just download it from, uh, from the web. And then you can pump a WAV file and then get, get an MP3 output. So that 100 megabyte will become maybe 5 megabyte or 8. Also, um, I noticed like when you guys use the overhead um, mic, it sounds more echo than using like a mic like this. Is that's the what, yeah, that's how I just yeah showed you the difference. Uh -huh. I'm wearing the head one, and it picks up any stray noise uh -huh, that uh -huh. it can pick up. So to reduce it, I can always speak louder and reduce my gain. So if I yell into it, you, you hear less echo. Mm -hmm. because I, I lowered the gain on this channel. But if, if I'm the lazy type, I speak with a soft, vo uh, soft voice. I got to pump up the gain. I got to pump up the gain. You, you can hear more of the kind of, kind of like the rumbling in the background. So that's because the microphone is picking it up, not me speaking into it. Oh, okay. so, so kind of, the, you know, checks and, bal checks and balances. Okay, good point. Okay, so we are going to move on, and this is just to remind our co-workers, it always helps to check who is being muted, who is not muted, who is left on unmuted, that can hurt you. So I can only <laughs> kind of remind you, but you have to kind of actually work on it to kind of appreciate it, okay? And the channel 16 audio from AV Room, that's the one that I just pointed out, Always mute it, otherwise you will hear something you don't want to hear. In-ear monitors, yeah. So, as I mentioned, there are four channels feeding four in-ear monitors, and they are actually, you know, powered by uh, four transmitters in the, uh, in the rack up front. And those four monitors are here. Bus number one, two, three, four. Right now, it's not doing anything. But that uses up four channels. And then to answer Albert's question on how many are left, five and six left, okay, seven and eight is used to feed the AV room. 
Then these two are fed, uh, feeding the two um, L1s, meaning the stage monitors. These two go to my USB recorder, and then these two goes to the boys' room and the lobby, I think. And these two are the reverb and my effects bus. One is reverb, one is decay, uh, delay. Okay, so that <laughs> accounts for all the 16 mix buses. Go ahead. T and post fader, you have to you have to go and uh, set it up in routing or not routing, but one of these things. You, you pick your points. Yes, you you don't you don't get a switch. So I'll I'll show you later. It's it's kind of like you got to find the right screen to do it. We normally pre prefigured it and pre configured it, and that's it. Unless you have specific needs, like my ultranet is sent to the front pre-fade. So when Dixon picks up his personal mixer, he can do his own mix. Um, for the four, uh, where am I? Coming back to uh, four IEMs, the in-ear monitors, they pretty much hear my mix. If they don't like it, we give them the iPad and they can kind of uh, tune their mix when they're up there. So, so we're um, sending them post fade. Sorry, quick question. So, so my personal monitor doesn't have um, like you. You don't adjust the the fader. On it doesn't the affect fader. you. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's always full blast. And then you got to tune your own. Uh, you know, each channel, each okay. of your sixteen channels. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So I mentioned there are two, but two buses that power. Uh, the two speakers, they are called delay. So delay is used in different ways on this mixer, and you have to be careful. The two, two speakers pointing to the rear of this hall is powered by matrix bus number one and two. So notice I pressed this last, the fourth button, and it actually uh, um, allows me to then control the matrix buses. And these, they are linked, and I can control how loud those two speakers operate. So normally we leave them at near zero, meaning zero meaning full blast. Zero dB is kind of like nominal output. Uh, all the way down is minus infinity. Minus infinity is zero gain. So the log of zero is minus infinity. Log of one is zero. Okay, uh, so the reverb and delay. So this is a fancy part. Uh, you know, one of the big pluses of the digital mixers is it gives you these free effects machines. And I'm just gonna do a quick demo of how you enable the delays. So the delays and uh, reverb, which is on buses 15 and 16. So notice I press the third button, which allows me to control bus, buses 9 through 16, and then 15 to 16 are these two. 15 is reverb, delay is 16. Now, so let's say I want to hear my Delay, and what does it mean by delay? It's actually an echo. Uh, you, you adjust the amount of delay and then your, 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 your ghost-like voice will come back, you know, uh, doing, doing something. Now, why don't you hear any delay? Because this is only part of the control. So, the, the other control is actually here in what is called the DCA, which is this first button. And uh, if I don't enable this guy, you don't hear a delay. If I a enable it, you, you may hear it, but I gotta put, put this channel in. And I may not have um, configured this channel into the delay. But anyway, let me see what it is. Uh, how do I, uh, 
It's on my matrix. See? Okay. It should be on. But uh, you're not hearing my delay. I don't know what's going on. And let me go back to here. Um, I got to troubleshoot why I'm he not hearing my delay and I'm not hearing my reverb. But it should be there on DCA here. So it's kind of, you got to play with this thing to, to kind of appreciate what it can do. Right now, I think it wasn't configured for my microphone and I can't send, send you a delay. So delay is actually, in, in the effects section, is actually an echo. And reverb is just kind of like a vibration, kind of uh, extension of, of what you're talking and make your, make your, make your voice a little bit rich and uh, resonating. OK. Uh, Yeah, we, we tried the reverse tab. It's not working out today. I'll go check with Jerry as to what has changed. And I'm not going into the FX2. It's actually on the effects tab, but it's pretty fancy. And, um, and you've got to pick FX1 is your delay, and then you can fine tune the parameters on your, on your, on your reverb. And then if you go into FX2 here, then it's the delay. So I say use with caution. It's a kind of like it can come back and haunt you. OK, mixes 7 and 8, audio feeds into AV room I mentioned. And uh, we're encouraged not to change settings on those buses. And then audio feeds to the outside. I mentioned buses 13 and 14 here. Yeah, where am I? Buses 14 to facilities. I don't know, Albert, do you know if they have connected the, uh, the paging speakers yet? Yes. Yeah. OK. Yes, they have. OK. So we'll leave these up and supposedly I don't know why we, I have to control the paging. I thought paging was controlled by the, somebody in the office. They have a control also. They okay. have a volume control. Also. So I'm not going to get into that yeah. because usually it's not part of our job to, uh, to do paging. So we pretty much covered everything. Oh, one thing I want to show you. How do you EQ? And uh, let's see. Ken, what microphone do you have? I have the red uh, hand, uh, Sennheiser. Sennheiser red. OK, so you're on here. So let me try to do something bad here. Uh, I will go to the EQ screen, and if I can ask. OK, so, so now we are panning onto EQ screen on your channel, which is a Sennheiser Red microphone. And uh, right now, I have pretty low gain, so when, when Ken talks, you know, there's no ringing, no feedback. So let's say someday we're doing uh, newcomer wel welcome, and uh, he doesn't hold up the mic as, uh, you know, most of the rest of us, and I got to really, really turn up the gain. So I'm going to turn up the gain now. Uh, something I got it. Okay. Oh. Now. Okay. See that? You hear that now? And you see? Did Did you see the the screen? I I think that's exactly what happened this morning. No. No. On the two microphones, uh, the newcomers. Uh, Okay. Welcome, microphone. Yeah. The, but the okay. trim was turned really high, so when it was turned on, it, there was some ringing. So now, I got to keep quiet now. I got to, I got to create that, that, you know, nasty sound. Okay, I'm going to stay quiet on this mic. In fact, I'm going to turn off my mic.
turning on my mic. I pretty much put this line on the frequency that it's giving me all this bad, you know, beep, squealing sound. Now I'm going to engage my EQ. And I'm going to drop the gain on that channel. I'm going to narrow. Okay? So now I'm going to turn off the EQ. I'm going to turn, increase the gain on Ken's red mic until it comes back with this. I engage the EQ and it cuts it down and I further. Now, you can hear other frequencies coming in. That means after I killed the, 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 the shop squeal, there's some other frequency that is sending feedback. But I already gained about maybe 3 to 4 dB of gain on that mic. So this is, this is called EQing a microphone. And then you can find the other frequencies and, null and, and kill them too. And that helps you gain certain amount of uh, kind of leeway in terms of uh, some, somebody who is soft spoken or not pointing the microphone the right way. So, so that's one use of the EQ. The other use is for our worship team. I'm going to, to load the worship team scene. Uh, give me a second here. Now, we can always get burned by not muting the, uh, the microphones the right way. So let me see who, who I haven't muted. Okay. Uh, where is that noise coming from? Uh, worship, worship team, team should, should be, be me. Oh, remember that. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm back. Remember that PC uh, from the audio room? Somehow it wasn't muted. And that's causing me the grief. So I always say, always mute this guy. I don't know how it got unmuted. It should not be saved in the praise team scene as unmuted. So I'm going to unmute it. But we'll do it later. OK, so for, for the praise team, I'm going to show you the EQ for the microphone, I mean for the drum. I select the drum channel, which is channel 21. Hit it go to EQ and press view. So uh, there's always a problem of people not being able to hear the, uh, the kick drum, which is the bass drum on the floor. And the bass drum comes in a frequency between 20 hertz to about 80 or 100 hertz. That's the main beef of the kick. You know, when, when, when the drummer hits it, it, it outputs that band of frequency. So in order to make it more audible, we boost th that part of the frequency. And the reason we do that actually is because, you know, the drum by itself, everybody hears it. But when the drum and the bass guitar are playing, then they get kind of mixed together. And the guitar always wins. Why? Because the guitar has other frequencies. So when Dixon plays other notes, hey, you know, I can hear the bass very clear. Where's the drum? It's there, but it's also part of Dixon. So people cannot pick them out. And so in order to compensate for that, I go to the guitar channel, which is the one next to it. Uh, number 20 instead of 21, we're going to pan to it. So the drum is here on number 21, and the guitar is here, the bass. So if, if you look at the EQ on that, I dropped some of Dixon's low frequency on that part. So that helps the drum come out. But everybody still hears the bass guitar. It has lots of other frequencies that come out from the guitar. You know, guitar can have a whole bunch of notes. So that's how, that's one way uh, most of DJs are actually overcoming that problem. It's kind of a very 
common problem that is kind of pretty well documented uh, if you go into the literature. So I'm just learning. Uh, and then the room, acoust the room acoustics have something to do uh, with messing things up, and I cannot resolve that at this time. It's kind of like everything bounces back and creates another kind of low, low frequency. I call it hum, but it's not a hum, but it, it just kind of feels like a hum. So that's pretty much uh, how we do EQ. We, we, we use it to help us whichever way we can. Oh, let me put, put your, uh, let me go back to my worship scene so that the regular mics come back on. Give me a sec. Uh, okay, can, give me a sec. Okay, let me see if your mics are on. Uh, unmute, who? Unmute this guy, one, two, Okay, see if you can... Oh, okay. Testing. Okay. So um, you, earlier you mentioned you put compression on the drum. Would that affect the EQ of the drum? Yeah, the answer is no. no. What, happen, what happens is it gets compressed only when it exceeds the electronic limit of the channel. I mean, that's how we set it. So you're always actually coming in... And let me increase my volume. You're always coming in at pretty much the top end. We're just holding down the top end to avoid overloading the channel. As I heard some comments say that they can't hear the punch of the drum. I'm wondering um, uh, if that's because it was cut off or it was compressed. But uh, the punch is a, 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 a feel and it comes in two ways. With an acoustic drum, you can hear the punch because of the membrane actually giving you a little bit pop. With this, with this electronic drum, you don't get that membrane effect. So it comes up as a low frequency boom. And if you listen to it, you can hear it, but you are right. It may not have the same kind of punch that uh, you could expect from an acoustic drum. Uh, Raymond has a comment. Uh, I think for drums, kick drum, generally speaking, um, <clears throat> the booming power will be the low frequency, but actually the punch comes more from the mid-range, and the attack comes more from the high frequency. But I think since this is, as you said, an electronic drum, I think it would be benefit more f to actually play with a drum module and pick a sound that like um, that person like more. Because like I think um, there are like it's a really good drum, like the Roland, uh, the, like there are a lot of sound in that like uh, drum module that you, a lot of things you can pay, play with. You can probably pick a drum sound that he or she likes more than what, whatever it is currently um, playing. Yeah, uh, Philip is the owner of this set. I think it's a Roland. Um, he played with the controller yesterday and uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, your point um, is well taken and the punch the pop actually has some high fre frequency component. That's why you hear the, pun the pop or the membrane. But the effect is kind of like more pronounced if you have an acoustic drum. But you're right. I mean, the bass is the bass. I mean, you can see it on the spectrum. It's, it's, it's down in that 20 to 100 hertz range. So when it coincides with a bass guitar, then you, don't, you cannot easily pick out the drum. I mean, they're there. You can you just cannot easily pick them out. Okay. What about oh sorry? What about the keyboard EQ? Did you guys do anything to the keyboard? Keyboard. EQ? Hopefully we do not do a whole bunch of EQ. It has certain bass, but actually keyboard bass is not as low as the, the bass in your guitar. I I checked it today. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, you you can check the octave and actually look up a table and you can see that frequency range. It's not as low as. The bass guitar, which actually goes, can go down to 30 and even 20. But of course, I, my ear can only hear down to about 30. So, but your point is well taken, yeah. Uh, sometimes it can be mistaken, meaning some days, if there's absolutely no bass guitar, a keyboard can kind of uh, substitute in for a bass guitar. Uh, it has that effect, but actually it doesn't have that low frequency. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I want to do 
uh, does anybody have any questions on power down? So the key is power down the M32 first before you go up front and power down the uh, digital snake. Otherwise, you'll hear a big pop. That's uh, kind of like the, the, the key of this presentation. Hopefully, you can pick up some of the, the points that are maybe bothering you or maybe you, you have looked for answers in the past and never got it. Uh, but the key is still you got to play with this thing and until you are comfortable. I mean, even I got burned by the, uh, the channel 16 uh, being unmuted and causing all that grief. Okay, so any more questions? Okay. Uh, okay, so Ken will you know, like to, would like to then address yeah, how we handle our expensive pieces of equipment. Okay. Take it away. Frank, oh. 我问一个问题啊, 这是用中文, oh. 那我在想如果以后在这种发生的时候怎么办是不是要很快的把一些东西 turn off掉了。呃，上礼拜对不对？我是说什么处理？像这种事情，先不管说我懂不懂这个整个的system的操作，那我现在就在想，万一发生这种情况的时候，就一个那是一个很尴尬的场合，am Turn off no, okay. you, there are three way, three areas you want to do. One is reduce and lower your main LR output. Uh, if you can pan to my uh, control, uh, this guy. Okay, this is the main LR. So this output controls all speakers in the hall. It does not control the subwoofer. It does not, uh, it does control the two delayed rear speaker. So when you hear a loud noise, you want to cut it off, mute, nobody hears anything. There are two areas you, that can bite you. That is the two stage monitors up front. It can also make some noise. There, unfortunately, then you'll have to go to bus uh, 9 and 10 and either mute them or lower these two faders. So remember, three faders, two is this um, um, stage monitor, and then the big one is the main output left and right. So at least then you stop the noise, and then you slowly turn it back and find out what's going on, and like what I just had to do when, uh, when, my, when my PC output, uh, when the PC output from the AV room is feeding back into my, my sound system. So let's see, if I unmute it, you'll, see, you'll, hear, you'll hear it, and it, it, it'll, it'll do this. So you turn, turn on, on, you turn, you turn off, off. At, at least, least you, you got, got rid, rid of it, it and, and then, then you, you find, find out what's, what's going, going on. on. So that's kind of like comes, uh, you deal with it, you know, you, you learn by mistake and then you learn more, you know, when different uh, situations arise. Frank, I think this is a temporary solution, right? Because I, if there's an interference, right? Even temporary, let's say we are way in the middle of service, okay? There's something happens, okay? And then you say, okay, I'm going to temporarily shut it off, but as soon as you turn it back on, the, in the interference is still going to be there. Well, as I say, you turn it off, you ease it back up, and then you look at which channel is giving you grief. You need to fast. Yeah, we have fast. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no magic. <laughs> Knowledge is your best tool. There's no magic, but, you know, it's all kind of Pardon the expression, this is all in, en in the engineering. I mean, you turn off the power, nothing comes out, and then you work it back from there. Okay, Ken? Okay, um, let's give a big hand to Frank. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank yeah, you. 
Thank you, Frank, for giving this uh, presentation. I think that's a very good training, very helpful for everybody. So uh, the following, uh, if you are not from the audio team, you can, uh, you can excuse. Uh, I want to uh, just talk to the audio team a little bit for 10, 10 minutes, OK? <laughs> or less. <laughs> no, Ken just don't want you get, to get bored. Yeah. Okay. No, Albert, you have to you have you have to stay. You don't get away easy. Okay, uh, there's a few things I want to say. There's number one is that um, the I think uh, Frank has already spoken a lot of the, about the mic and everything. How how they are connected. So I want to really uh, just remind everybody. There's a. Thanks the for your first surface comments. and the second surface, right? So when the service, uh, first surface that uh, the those co-worker comes for the first surface, um, the mic that you need to set up will include this uh, choir mic. Uh, this is the piano mic and the podium mic, and also prepare a wireless mic for the for the speaker, and especially on the on the Sunday that is uh, with Holy Communion, Sing Chan the Zhu Zhu Yi Yao Chun Bi Ge Wireless Mai for the Sing Holy Communion. That's what uh, okay. And uh, normally, what I would do is to prepare all the mic for the praise team also, just connect so that uh, when during the change between the first and the second service, uh, there will be more time for us to do a, a sound check and all those, okay? Um, oh, there's one more mic that you might want to remember, is that uh, for the Sing Chan of Zhu Yi, we need to prepare one extra wire mic for the hand bell, okay? The hand bell mic will be uh, one of those uh, NT5 mic. We have enough mic. Yes, don't worry about that. We we have. <laughs> I'm talking about the one that we have. So it'll be the pointing to the handbells. Okay. So so where do they mic? Where do they plug the mic? Okay. Uh, the mic that goes to the handbell will be plugged in the central center stage. Uh, there's one more. Uh, so the outlet. unused thing called the podium mic number two, right? Yeah, okay. podium mic number two. Thank you. Um, what else do we? That's that's for the mic. And also, we have a special assignment: how the mic are being uh, stored in in the drawers. Okay, so if you come in. Look for the mic, the wireless mic, the handheld, we put on the second drawer on the, the big right hand side, the big one. The wire mic we'll put on the third one. The bottom. The bo bottom one. So if you, after you use it, we put it back the right place and next time you'll pick it up from the right place. So you won't, be, you won't have to look around for, for different mics. For the bell pack, we put on the uh, left hand side the first drawer. Okay, the bell pack. Um, there are batteries, rechargeable batteries. As much as possible, please use the rechargeable battery. Okay, because we, had, we use a lot of battery every time we have a lot of uh, wireless mic. So every time after use, Please take them out and put it on the charger and recharge them. We have one charger. I think we might need to buy another one. Yeah. Each mic we need two. Yeah. So there are two bags, two bags here. One says need recharging. So those that have been used, 
uh, put in the charger or put in this bag. Okay, if the charger is full, put in the bag. And this one will put in the new one or the charged one. Okay, so. After, after it's charged, uh, uh, the charger will show full. Um, otherwise, you have to put on the mic. If you are on using the, uh, the batteries for the newcomer's mic, uh, with two, with two, um, two lines, I think they are good for the newcomers. But the, if it goes to the last one, you might want to forget about it. Yeah. But so, norm, huh? Yeah, let me make a comment. On, on these rechargeable batteries, um, you may see only two dots in the microphone after even the first 15 minutes, but that's okay because the voltage on these rechargeable batteries are lower. They are 1.25 volts nominal. Ooh, ooh. Turn it off first. Turn it off first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, he disassembled the mic. Uh, yeah, he is. That's okay. Uh, yeah, don't leave the battery in the in the microphone after use. And uh, some sometimes, especially with the with those uh, the, this microphone, the they turn leave it on all the time. They yeah. don't turn it on, off. So we are wasting the battery. So yeah, so let me finish what I was trying to say. So these rechargeable batteries are 1.25 nominal, meaning um, that's their normal operating point. Uh, when they are fully charged, they actually show up as 1.4 volts. And that's why your microphone gives you four dots. Because four dots meaning 1.4 or above. Uh, remember, the standard alkaline batteries are 1.5 volts nominal. And when you drop to about 1.8 volts, I mean 1.3, uh, 1.28 volts, then you, want, you, you start thinking about replacing them. But these guys at 1.25, they last a long time. So with two dots, leave it in there, it, it can still last a long time. So that's pretty much it. Meaning, when I say last a long time, meaning it can last the, the whole worship service. I mean, you still want to recharge them after the service. So, yeah. so that's what it I want to say. It can last for two or three hours. But anyway, um, so right now we have uh, one iPad. The iPad, we can uh, turn it on and use it as a con like a remote controller for the, uh, for the mixer. So we can use it and walk around and uh, check on the, if you go to a certain corner that you can't hear the voice very clearly, you can use it to do some adjustment. Uh, that's uh, very helpful. Sometimes I do it as a, a parallel uh, to help, helping the, the main uh, controller. So assuming he's looking at the first layer, I can use it to look at the second layer because we have uh, a microphone that stays on the second layer and the first layer and sometimes it's really uh, it's not fast enough to go to the different layer to do the muting or unmuting. So you can use that as much as what you can think, what you can imagine, and use it, utilize it to help the uh, help the flow going on smooth. Uh, 